Ready for the start. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. And down the stretch they go. I don't know if Chalky played that intro. He probably did. But it is episode 105 of Broad Street Hustle, the Kentucky Derby episode that I believe Jason said was his favorite episode every year is the horse segments and specifically the, this monster one we do where we'll go through the pick five for the derby and we will go through every horse for the derby who who we think can win who has no shot etc action pack show unfortunately we do have to recap the sixers after that debacle last night and as a series i'm your host tommy nanny i'm gonna go right around the horn so we can get started we got jason say it hey tom what's going on jason we got uh jimmy the chalk hey yeah and we got back from the DL, Christopher still on, Maker. Still on the DL. What's up, guys? Still on the DL, but able to make an appearance. Um, all right, Jason, I want to kick it over to you, but I just got to start, you know, two thoughts before. Like, you know, it sucks right now, this episode. I'm glad we're doing next, she- next year, next week, because I would be more optimistic the way that the game ended, the way the season ended, you know, the cap space, blah, 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 all that stuff. But right now I'm just pissed off because it's another year that we get robbed of playoff basketball. Another year Embiid, although he played well at times, fouled in the playoffs. Another year that the organization let Embiid down by what surrounded him. Another year Tobias Harris was just a horrendous basketball player. Nurse had moments where he's okay, but some things he did was questionable too. So now you have another year where a coach made some, some mistakes. So I'm pissed off. I don't want to steal the thunder. Um, I just can't be optimistic for this particular episode. Uh, Jason, your thoughts? Well, I mean, I I guess I'll take a step back, right? Because uh, we we haven't had a podcast since after game two. So game three, real quick, was the Embiid 50-point game, right? It was a game I think we all kind of, I know definitely Tommy and I said they weren't losing that game. Um, We did question game four whether they would lose or not, and... You know, that was that was just disappointing across the board. Um, and I don't know why Nurse kind of backed off. And th- this is the start of that. Like, you know, and Tommy mentioned Nurse made a few mistakes. Why why he backed off what he was doing with Brunson? Um, you know, I guess he was concerned because Hart was, you know, hitting shots early in the series and DiVincenzo and stuff. But, like, Brunson from game three on just went off. And, you know... He also, in that game for, like, he had Embiid. That was the game Embiid played the whole second half, and Embiid was totally spent at the end of the game and was, like, a, a minus on the court. So, you know, that was that was the game that probably wound up losing them the series. You know, game five was the maxi game, and Embiid was like a zombie in that game. He looked terrible, had, like, nine turnovers. But, um, and our boy Harris played good in that game. But then we get to last night. Um, Knicks were just a better team last night. Um, they out hustled them. They out rebounded them like they did the whole series. Um, Brunson was unstoppable. Um, like I said, from game three on, um, their role players, you know, just totally outplayed the Sixers role players. Hart, Hart and Stein, Stein, however you say his name, they both stepped up. Um, Harris, I mean, how did, how do you have a $40 million player? Play 29 minutes, take two shots. I don't even care that he had zero points. He took two shots. Pushback I'm going to give you on this is five years ago, we, whatever it was, Harris, we, we talked about Harris. Four years ago, eh, Harris, three years ago, he stayed. Two years. We know Harris is a bad basketball player. I don't care if he made a dollar or four. He's terrible at the sport of basketball. He's just so. He still played 29 minutes. Now, do they have other options? He still played 29 minutes. Take him out of the game. Put somebody else in. He's a nut. He stinks. Yeah. He shouldn't factor in the game whatsoever. That's my problem with the whole Harris thing. We know he stinks. Yeah. He's not going to get better. No. And I'll tell you what, as good as Maxie was, obviously Maxie stole game five. He was bad last night. He cost her. He pretty much cost him the game. He like, he had a terrible game. Um, But, uh, you know, I thought they blew the game early in the third quarter when they didn't extend the lead. And I think it started when Embiid made that horrible outlet pass. 
If you guys remember, I think they were up seven, maybe, at that time. They had all the momentum, and here's Embiid just throwing a terrible outlet pass. And that just changed the whole momentum, and then by the, I guess by the end of the third quarter, the game was tied. And I, no, I, I don't think I texted one of you guys. I actually think I texted Sal, and I said, they're, they're, lose, they're not winning this game. Like, I could just tell, like, you know, if they didn't, if they didn't have a, a big lead after that third quarter, they weren't going to win. And I thought, like, I thought Embiid was careless the whole series with his passing. Just, I mean, you can turn him the ball over and stuff, and it was mostly his passes. Um, well, one thing I'll say about that, though, is you could tell the, the, the lack of playing together. There was many, I mean, like a simple pass where the guy would move before, yeah. you know, like a beam throw at the max, and Max would be moving. Yeah. And Oubre had some, so communication yeah. was definitely an issue, which was lack of, yeah. you know, playing together as well. But just real quick, I mean, it was a it was a great series. It was just uh, they weren't good enough, and I, you know, we'll talk more next week. But I, this wasn't the year for them. Like this was the year that Maury wanted to purge the roster of all these bad contracts. So while they probably could have won the series, I, you know, I don't know how far they could have gone. Yeah, uh, Chalky, what is uh, your thoughts as? Uh... One of those guys that Embiid was talking about after game was it? Well, listen, I I, I don't blame Chalky at all. I would have did the same. He, he's 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 got to blame the Sixers uh, for <laughs> charging ridiculous prices to incentivize uh, their season ticket holders to sell to New Yorkers. Uh, anyway, um, I mean, whether it was in our, our our formal season preview or slightly before, you know, once the Harden drama was starting, I basically said this is going to be a lost season in the, in the narrative of Embiid's career. They're not going to put together the best chance. If you're going to win championship is Harden stays and hopefully plays better. He didn't stay. Mari made the best of that situation with the trade to set him up. And then Embiid was having historically good season and he goes out. And so trade deadline comes, you don't know what you're getting out of Embiid. So you couldn't make a move there uh, for sure, because you don't know when and if he's coming back. So, Look, I, I I mean, I'm not, I, I'm really not upset. Like, this is one of the least, even, even if it's a first round exit, it's one of the least uh, times I'm upset of, like, the Sixers getting knocked out. I would rather them get knocked out now than waste my time or energy for moving forward. Um, even if it means getting to the conference finals to get destroyed by Boston. It, it was an exciting series. I think, you know, there's a lot of good games. I think really game three was the only one where there was, it wasn't a one possession game late. And, you know, um, game four was a huge missed opportunity and probably was this turn in the series number one, cause it went, made it three, one, but Robinson did not play. Bogdanovich got hurt moments after coming into the game. Hartenstein gets five fouls in the third quarter and the Knicks without a player taller than six, seven on the court out rebound the Sixers and MB gets nothing done in the fourth quarter. I mean, and that just, that just flipped it. And that was the game you got to win because you're no matter how tired you are, you're out manning them because they're down a couple guys. And, you know, Achua is is giving them problems, like with rebounds and underneath. So that was the main lost opportunity. Um, And then last night, so I know what you're saying, Jay. I, I, I disagree on the turning point in the game because I think it was a little later. So the Embiid pass was bad. They were up seven. New, after the Embiid pass, New York was able to cut it to one. They got the lead back to 10 when Maxi hit that three. The next two times down the court, Maxi put up threes and missed, and the Knicks came down and hit threes, so it went from 10 to, to 4 like that. And I think that was, they got up double digits for the first, that would, that would have been the time to, you know, put them away, and Maxi didn't hit those shots, and he didn't hit them for most of the game. Look, I mean, in the end, one of the reasons I don't feel as bad, and we know this team won't look the way it looks next year, but... If you look, go back to the last couple of years, game seven against Boston, game six against Miami, the team quit. Okay. This team did not play well at times. This team did not quit on each other. They fought till the end. They had, they could have easily quit in one games, one, two, five, or six at, at points when they were down by a lot. And they, you know, they won game five and almost pulled out game six and should have won game two, whatever. But, you know, those are games in past years. And if you want to throw in the Hawks game where Simmons quit, They've quit and gotten knocked out of the playoffs and, you know, bad shots, not the right decisions. It wasn't to me a quitting situation. And 
you know, Maury will have, this will be the make or break season for Maury because essentially he can have a beat maxi and 60 plus million in cap space to do something. And we'll talk about that next week. All right, Meeker, be the, be the voice of reason, please, as the, we give out participation trophies, that our bar is now set as they didn't quit. That's why I'm pissed off. This is, that's, that's what we look forward to is the team didn't quit. And I know what you're saying, but it's seven years now into this. I, I think, the, the, listen, I think, I know Meeker's got to talk, but I think Tobias Harris quit. Like, you're putting up two shots. You're not, a yeah, lack I, of I effort get you on there. defense. Oh, he he passed up an open lack of effort three. on rebounding. Yeah. There was so there was a couple of balls that just I went right over. His, uh, but I know it's Meeker's turn, so okay. Meeker, go please. Now I was just going to talk about how I think this is very uh, apropos to the Iverson years when we talk about Embiid and Iverson didn't have the right guys surrounding him. We couldn't win with a with a you know five foot ten guard. And now we can't win with a seven foot center. I mean, it, it's five years of that, five years of this. Now we're going to go in the off season. Hopefully, we're going to, you know, add to the mix here. You know, they have a Maxi, which Iverson never had a kind of guy like Maxi playing with him. This is probably a better team, at least during these Embiid years, than the Iverson teams were. But you know, everyone's going to talk about, I think, in this off season about whether or not we can win with the big guy being the focal point, you know? And, you know, it doesn't quite bother the Denver Nuggets, but of course, you know, Jokic plays a completely different game than Embiid does, and he's extremely... You know, they, also win, they also didn't win the year Murray was out. I, mean, I don't know how much yeah. different he plays than Embiid. A little bit. I mean, but Embiid plays at the top of the key like Jokic does, and, you know... Jokic stays the healthy for the most part. He's I mean, they didn't true. win. That's yeah, true. But they didn't, they've been, Gordon, Porter, Murray, and Joker have been playing together for four or five years now. And they only won last year. I mean, that supporting cast is much better than this supporting cast, right? I mean, that's obviously why they're the champions. But I always like to go back to some of the keys that we talked about when Omar was on the show. And I wish he was on the show tonight to talk about some of these things because I just want to go over some of the things that we pointed out which the Knicks had to do to win the series versus what the Sixers had to do to win the series and kind of look back on whether or not it worked out. And if we start with the five points on the Knicks, one of them was to wear out and beat on defense. One of the things that I noticed is that, you know, whether it was the injury, whether it was the Bell's palsy, whether it was whatever the reason was, Embiid wasn't obviously getting back on defense like he normally was. He wasn't contesting shots at the three point at the three point line like, like he normally does, getting out on the shooters. So conserving energy, obviously, maybe on defense might be part of the reason why, but we didn't see a whole lot of that. So I think that whether it was the injury or not, he was definitely worn out, especially going into the latter parts of the game, other than the game that he scored 50 points. Uh, the, the Knicks had to make other players beat them. Um, and aside from Embiid, and although Maxi beat them in Game Five, overall the Knicks did a decent job of limiting limiting everybody else. I mean, Harris non-existent, Oubre up and down, Lowry had some moments. I don't think that was the Knicks doing. I think that was talent yeah, player, doing. Yeah, the players. The players didn't didn't do what they had to do. Batum, you know, he was inconsistent with his shot. Uh, Brunson, you know, needed to be as great, as good as a player as advertised. And I can't, I can't say anything more than he was great, you know, other than the first two games. And Jason, you talked about this. I want to kind of go back to this point. They got away from doubling Brunson and let it, letting other players beat them, which happened, you know, in games one and two. And, but, you know, after they moved away from that, Brunson had four games averaging 40 points. You know, so it was like pick your poison situation when it came to Brunson and whether or not you were going to double up yeah, on him. Yeah, but I'd um, rather let Josh Hart beat me. And I know he hit that shot last yeah. night, but he was, and Diva Chancho was like three for 17 in like a couple of games. So I, I'd, and he I'd was, much rather say get Josh Hart, 
You want to be if Josh Hart keeps hitting no shots, then he's just going to beat me. I I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, that's that's it. It. is that a nurse problem? Is that in do you do you? Fault I, I don't like I don't yeah I don't like how nurse changes. I mean I I know we talked about it on the podcast, and I said I wouldn't change a thing if I was nurse because they they won game two. They just well the one thing the one thing we talked about is it because he was going to address. We thought they were going to get something out of. Melton and he played yeah, I, one I, game five minutes I or mean, whatever. So we that, were that we were guy, completely I, wrong there. I, I, I don't didn't. know why he even dressed. To I, me, I, it was the. I mean, the Knicks didn't put up games where they were score. They scored what 111, 105. Like they're they scored ninety seven the one game. So like, although Brunson got forty points in four games, I mean they they didn't score. Like the offense of the Sixers were the problem, not hope yeah. containing Brunson or containing Clark. The Sixers missed shots. Like, they didn't do enough They were missing too many wide open shots. In the game. Actually, right? Maxie had two get bad games because he was bad in game four, too. He, he, was, yeah. he was bad in game yep. four. But look at the second chance points, too, the Knicks. Oh, I mean, yeah, they had they, they made their first, like, eight, eight shots last night, <laughs> and then they missed 10 but got five of those rebounds, and they were up 20 points. Yeah. I'm going to get to that, yeah. Um, but the other thing with Brunson is that he's constantly getting on the line. Constantly, well, he has an illegal basketball move. He does have an illegal. That's that's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> that will be banned next year for sure. It's they they banned already two years banned. Ago. It. They got they did ban. Yes, they banned. You can't jump backwards into a guy and no, throw off you can't headbutt him. I mean, honestly, that's, that's that's what Max Maxie should learn how to do that if they're not if they're going to call it. Yeah, that's that's right? bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. Uh, up tempo, like the Knicks need to play a little more up tempo. I think that they were much more up tempo than they than they showed during the regular season. And uh, from what I saw, they had a lot more fast break points than the Sixers did. And the Knicks got some minutes, uh, good minutes from the Hartensteins and the Robinsons and the Bogdanoviches before he got hurt. Uh, and McBride hurt them, obviously, early in the, uh, in the early games, not so much in game six. Uh, but their bench, you know, other than game six with Buddy Heald, their bench outplayed the Sixers bench. And we talked about how important that was going to be. And it certainly ended up being pretty important when it came to the Knicks keys to win the series. So like four out of these five things we're talking about here, basically the Knicks executed. Now, from the Sixers' point of view, the first thing we're talking about here, Chalky, is what you're talking about. Keep the Knicks off the offensive glass and second chance opportunities at a minimum. Well, uh, that didn't happen. You know, the Knicks, I, I looked up a stat. They had 32.2% of offensive rebounding opportunities. They converted 32.2%. The, the Sixers, 25.6%. So even though that's a small margin, like 7% margin, that ends up being that you score five or six points off of that margin with all these games being as close as they were, that might be the difference in the game. You know, Chalky, so uh, you were talking about that. If you wanted to elaborate on it, that was a big big key of this series and it, it just didn't work out for the Sixers. I, I mean, it was, it was big on, on why they got down by 20 points last night. Well, the Sixers weren't hitting shots and the Knicks made whatever six of their first eight, but then the Knicks weren't hitting shots, but they were getting second and third chances to keep it going. And I mean, they're just momentum killers. Game too. four, game, game four, they four dominated the boards. And yeah. so in a close game that just, you know, if you dominate right. in the first quarter, it's not the same as dominating the fourth. So the momentum and where it comes, like you're saying, Tom, like, when that's happening in the fourth quarter, you're trying to get a stop to get the ball back and get the lead, and you give up three rebounds. Yeah, that's that. That means a lot more than if it's two minutes into the game. Yeah. Plus, they didn't turn the ball over as much. The Sixers turned the ball over more in the series. And look, I don't think Mika, this, was... uh, this this uh, tour you're reading from does it end anytime soon? Because we are we do have to speed up this show. Um, yeah, because yeah, it mean, is a dirt and show. Just it's a... It, 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 they keep like all the things we talked about, like bottom line is this, that the Knicks just executed more than the Sixers did in most facets of the game. And they outplayed them. They out hustled them. They wanted it more. However you want to talk about it. The injury to Embiid's knee obviously contributed towards this. Um, you know, but look, we're going to talk about what they need to do in the off season and some other podcasts, but it is a disappointing year. I think the, the, the Sixers were a more talented team. The Knicks are a better team than the Sixers. Team. Played more cohesively. And no, que no question about that. I mean, they go deeper. They, they got more from their other guys. No question. I still stand by this as one of the worst two sheets that I've ever seen in the Knicks. But 
I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, time will tell. I don't think they're going to beat the Pacers. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, like I said, it is our Derby show, so we, we do move, want to move on. Mika, we're going to let you go unless you did have. Oh, we any... need his Derby yes. pick. We need his Derby pick. Not, not a, not a, a notion in the world do I have about the Derby. I really? Any... Pick a number. Pick a number. One through twenty-one. Not not well. No, oh, he's not winning. <laughs> Track fan. We'll go with number twelve. Me, Mika, walk. We'll have you back next week for our uh, uh, next year show for the Sixers, and obviously we'll probably talk some Phillies as as it's a slow sports week. But have a thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great night. All right, guys. I'll talk to you. All right, let's get into the Derby. Why we're here tonight. Hopefully we have some listeners uh, that don't always tune in, but are tuning in for the Derby, which we, we tend to have um, for our horse segment, some, some of the guys, uh, not the traditional listeners. So hopefully we could give you some picks. Uh, we did have scheduled somebody who was going to be in Louisville, but due to uh, still waiting for the bus to leave the track from the Oaks, he was not able to uh, get on. And we don't have his picks as of now. Maybe he'll send them during the show. It's the, everybody knows I'm Jimmy D, um, and we'll give those out if, if they do come. But right now, it's just the three of us, Jason, Jimmy Chalk, and myself. We're going to kick it off. We're starting with race eight, which is the start of the pick five that ends with the Derby. That's the Pat Day Mile. Uh, it's a grade two race, run at a one-turn mile at Churchill. Very good race every year. And uh, we'll kick it off with Jason. Yeah, I thought this was a tough race. Um, you know, my top pick, I'm actually going to pick a price here. I liked that the seven who day, um, and I, I thought there was just a lot of speed in the race and I just thought he was going to get a good pace to kind of to close into. So, um, and with, like I said, I'm going to spread, you know, he's, he's going to be, he's 10 to one morning line. He, he might be higher than that, but, um, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can rank my picks, but I'm also going to use top Connor. Um, the eight, um, he's speed cutting back. He paired sevens on Theragraph. I thought he should improve. Um, I'm also using the 12 Nash for Cox. He's got to win at the track. He, he's kind of one of them that might just sit off of the speed. So he might get first run. Um, I thought you have to use the 11 to Vla Vlahos. I mean, that, that horse could be a monster. I mean, he ran a huge number at Santa Anita. Uh, I think it was a three on a thoroughgraph, if I remember correctly. But, um, you know, I mean, who knows how good that horse is. Um, he just might be the speed of the speed. Um, you know, O'Neal, who knows what kind of vitamins he gives him. So, uh, and then I'm using one more horse, uh, the the two B-line. Um, you know, he he paired eights in his first two races. He he might He may improve off of that as well. So, uh, five deep in that race for me. All right, I was going to move to Chalky, but I will, I'll take it over because, um, you know, to me, this was a race that's tough, but my top pick was the seven. Who the hate? Um, so, I mean, an echo what Jason said. Same, same reasons. Uh, he came back this year and ran a top. He paired two eights to finish the season off last year. Comes back, runs a new top. Uh, a lot of times we see them, at t you know, on the Theragrass run another top. Right. He's... And the pace, I have it as a very hot pace as well. Um, and he's one that could sit in a good position and make a run. Uh, so he was my top pick. You know, I'm not going to, I'll give him sort of in order, but my second pick was the eight, Top Connor. Top Connor, who, let me see my notes. Speed cutting back. Shocker there. Um, I mean, it's, it's Chad Brown. He, he's, he can run speed. He can run off. I mean, he, he ran, he didn't run, you know, he finished sixth in the bluegrass. Coming off LASIK, so it, you know the LASIKs on, LASIKs off is always, you know, you know, you don't know what to do with it. But it was a great one. It was two turns, and he still ran a seven. I mean, he didn't run a bad race, so um, he was a pick. And then I'll just go. I have a couple. You know, Nash was one of my other picks for the same reason. But then I did have two bombs in there. Um, Beeline, I, I didn't. I, you know, those costume horses sometimes just scare me, um, but. I had five C's the gray, who's a horse that can, you know, Torres might make that one sustained long close. And if it is a crazy pace, who knows? Um, 
he, I don't know if the rains, if it is going to rain, it's not going to rain. I know I saw today had slop. So he, he's ran well in the slop. And the other one is Gettysburg Address, who's another horse who can come off the pace. I think uh, a couple of people like them at the uh, wood. He's cutting back as well. Um, I mean, he's going to be an absolute bomb. And, and these are just horses that, you know, if you're playing a multi, you want to maybe throw them in if you're thin in other legs, which I am. Uh, so that was why I said, let's throw those two horses in as well. But yeah, overall, who day is my top pick in seven. Chalky? My top pick is, if you can see that, the seven, who day. He's not winning. Obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll save it. The other, uh, Nash would be my second choice. I wasn't going to use Top Connor. I mean, they're both kind of the same thing, speed cutting back. It might be foolish to leave one off and not use the other, but um, I was only going three deep here, and the wild card is uh, Vlahos, and so it would be in the mix for me. Uh, first time, uh, O'Neal, which... Yeah, the only thing Jason I'll say with that, Go ahead. With that horse is Louis, Louis Mendez gets horses ready first and second starts. So he's a, he's a win early trainer. And then he gets rid of the horses. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know what's been run out at Santa Anita. You know, he, Louis Mendez has the horse, runs him early, does win. I mean, he wasn't, he was 13 to one, but second start, I, I was leery with him. Yeah. I, know, I, I mean, I, I don't know that you'll even get eight to one on him because it seems like a couple people like him, but you know, monster early, you know, he's got, he's got early pace figures that will put with the other guys up front. And if he turns out to be a freak, he could go wire to wire. And if he's not, hopefully who can come and clean it up. So. 7, 11, 12 for me. And the thing, the yeah. thing is, you know, it's Derby Day and Churchill might be fast, you know, and if it's fast, then he's the fastest horse. Maybe he just. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of fast horses in this race. And I did see today, it looked like Speed was carrying, obviously. I saw in the Oak Speed one, yeah. of course. Um, but it is, you know, it was wet. You don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. But it, it's always fast. And the Path Day Mile, I, I want to say. In years past, has looked like on paper to be super fast, and horses can, you know, run it and and sustain it. You know, yeah. this the speed. I'm trying to think of it. There was a hurting horse, maybe that I'm thinking of, and I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. The second start kind of scares me. Coming to shipping from Santa Anita, I, I I feel like it's it's a tough a tall task for that horse to to run. Anything else before we move to race nine? Nope. All right. Ra- race nine is the American turf. It's a grade two, mile and a 16. Um, Churchill in the past, the turf has been kind of funky. We've seen horses that just do well on it. We've seen horses that do p- perform poorly for no reason, uh, run at other tracks, and they'll do well, vice versa. So um, haven't followed it this year. So I do. I think Churchill just opened not that long ago. So I, I don't know if the turf has still been funky, but I got to imagine they've fixed some of those. There are some prices pool. today. I- was there? <clears throat> yeah, it was, so it was might, uh, yielding might, soft turf, but yeah. So you might still see that. Um, well, any, but nonetheless, I, I mean, I cap it as, as straight up. It's hard to, you know, cap it any other way. Um, so this was a race that I, and I'll start. This was a race that I saw could be like super spready, could go, you know, you could see prices or you could see chalk. So I, I struggled with it. Because, um, because of that reason, I'll, I'll just see my, my top horse is the five legend of time. Um, one of the reasons why, if you look at the five races, four of those races, that horses run left-handed and here in America, obviously we run left-handed overseas. They don't run left-handed as much. And it is an Applebee shipper, um, as Chalky pitcher comes back for me, it is an Applebee shipper. Um, and we know what Charlie Applebee could do runs left-handed goes to a mile and an uh, eighth race explodes, wins easily with William Buick, has the Tory arm. That's the chalk. I could see that horse going off at eight to five, you know, something low and winning and spreading. And you're like, damn. But I also could see other horses winning. And some of the other horses that I had were the two Tricari. So Grand Motion has uh, has popped on days like this in the past. I found it interesting that Raspoli stays with the two and jumps off McCarthy's horse, the four. Again, you know, you play the Jackie Shuffle, you, sometimes you get bit. Uh, but I, I thought that was a little interesting, as I know McCarthy does ride uh, Raspoli a lot in California. The six, Neat, was one of the other horses. Um, Atris had, I did see Atris had a horse run second at a, at a price today. 
um, on the turf to a bomb. Is that might have been the race one at like a twenty to one one in the Atris? No, I think um, I think it was the race I ran one with Chad Brown, and then Atris' horse ran second. So I thought that was interesting. I could see maybe Atris brought some turf horses here to Churchill. He has some speed that uh, Raul Gutierrez likes to run front end horses. So I could see him maybe being up front and staying there. And then lastly was 10 set. He's a, he's only has two races. It's Cassie, another one that could pop on Churchill on this day. He has Jose Ortiz coming off of Jaramillo. Not as off of golf stream, but just another horse that I thought had uh, some shots. So I was four deep if I had to pick four horses, but the five was my top pick. Jason, I will go to you next. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's the same thought pattern as you. Like I thought, you know, I went through, I watched replays, like, especially I watched a lot of replays of this race for the other turf race coming up, the classic or whatever it's called, the old Forester and obviously Derby replays. But, um, I thought this race was impossible. I had six horses written down and then I went back and I just said, you know, the five just might be better than these horses and just might win. So like. I know when we go to my pick five later, I'm single in this five, even though I have six horses written down and I just might mess around with trifectas with those other horses. But, um, you know, again, um, I'm going to make the five, the legend of time for Apple being the Tory, my top pick. Um, I, I thought about spreading like crazy, but the other horses I'll, I'll use in some way is, um, the 14 Ag agate road. I just I can't throw Irad out in, in turf races. I just can't let him beat me. Um, I like the 10 set uh, for Cassie um, and Jose Ortiz. The 11, Cugino, I thought had a shot. And then a couple of bombs was the two, you know, Tommy like Chikari. And then, again, from replays, I watched that three, Laganos, and, like, he's got a turn of foot, and he's going to be coming, and he's got a shot. He's got a shot, and he especially has a shot to get the board. So uh, I am not throwing that three out. Um, but again, in my main in my main play, it's the five is going to be single. Okay. Chalky, wrap us up on race nine. It it's kind of sounds counterintuitive to say it's a wide open race, and then you pick the favorite. But, I mean, you know, the five, put the five on top. I mean, in full, full. Full transparency, he is seven to two morning line. So he, although he's oh, favorite, he, right? yeah, he might not yeah. like that. Exactly. Morning. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't get it done, then I think the race is wide open. And I have three other horses all coming out of the same race, uh, same prep, which is the Transylvania from Keeneland. That's the three, uh, Laganos, uh, the eight, Lord Bullingdon, and the 11, Kajino. Now, I didn't pick take the winner of that race because I thought these other horses. Uh, I thought the horse that won got a little bit of a better trip and the other uh, horses ran well. And, you know, they're all going to, you know, they're all 10 to 1 or higher on the morning line. Um, Bullington is the other McCarthy, but, you know, Johnny Velasquez rode him last time and he knows how to ride at Churchill. And Cugino, um was further back in the Transylvania than he had been in some other races, kind of had to make an earlier move. Shogun's got the blinkers on there. So maybe trying to get him into it a little earlier. Um, so, but I'll be five on top and then three, eight, 11 also in this leg. Okay. All right. Let's move on to race 10. This is the Churchill Downs. It's a seven for and greed one event. Uh, sorry, Chalky, uh, that you just spoke, but I will go back to you as it's your turn to go first here. So my topic here is not going to be the chalk. It's going to be the three, Bo Cruz. So there's not necessarily a ton of speed signed on, although obviously, you know, Zozos uh, did not run well his last race, not get the lead. Um, he's shown speed and he's got some early pace, but he's been running a um, mile or longer, some, you know, one or two uh, one-turn races. He's one at Churchill, so you don't want, I don't want to completely disregard him, but I'm not using Zozos at all. So Bo Cruz... Uh, is another horse that is a horse that's shown uh, two big leaps this year. Um, he's got Stahl, uh, Stahl is his trainer, or teases on him. You know, maybe he bounces off of two big improvements. Uh, but I mean, if he's got any room to move forward, it puts him right there. And at 10 to 1, um, I'll take a shot uh, with that. And the other horse I will use is the four, Mr. Wireless Gutierrez for Calhoun. Um, again, he's got a couple, you know, negative numbers on the sheets in uh, route races. 
made the cutback. Um, it was an optional claimer at, at fairgrounds, but um, ran another good number. So this will be his second cutback, well, second turn back in a row. He'll be stretching the back out a little further, going seven as opposed to uh, the six last time. But um, I'll use him as well. He'll be right off the lead potentially. So for me, it's it's three, four here. Okay, Jason. Uh, I'm going to go three deep. Um... And I'm I'm going to take a shot with a price is my top pick. Uh, I I thought uh, the ten gun pilot uh, for Asmussen, he's got a win at Churchill. I, I I thought there was is pace in this race. I think he's going to get pace to run into. Um, you know he ran huge last day out. Um, I am using Zozos uh, on the you know um, he's two for three at Churchill Downs. You know I, I'm just going to throw out his Breeders' Cup race and just you know he got time off after that race maybe something wasn't right with him after you know for that race so um i think he's live i think if he runs his best race he probably wins but uh so i'm going to use him uh cox is good off the layoff and i am also using the four mr wireless he's just a consistent horse and again i i see P pace i think he's going to get pace to run into um so in order i'd like 10 6 and 4 Okay, um, this is a race where I actually have a single, uh, but then I also have a little bit of spread for, you know, I have two multis, so like singles and different, but so my single was the six Zozos. Um, I don't see why he's not going to run big. I mean, the Breeders' I, yeah, I just throw that race out, the Breeders' Yeah, Cup. completely yeah. throw it yeah. out. The horse is cutting back. He's off, he's run off layoffs. He can, I mean, he's, it's Cox. He loves Church. He's run big at Churchill. Like his only race he didn't run at Churchill was the Derby. Um, the other times he's ran, so he's speed. It's only seven furlongs, which I do like to speed for speed. I think they can carry it. So he's he's kind of a round horse with speed who can carry, who should be able to carry the seven furlong race. Um, so he was my single on one of them. Now, if I was using other horses, which I am on another multi, the two tie on a twist. So that switch to Irad is just huge. Um, a horse like this who's going to be off the pace just needs to be timed correctly um you know so moving from Torres Land, and Landeros you know you go through the list I love that that move so he's one of them three Bo Cruz so to Chalky's point his one turn race was has both times have been good he ran huge last time he has a little bit of speed on the front end and then the four Mr. Wireless so nothing crazy that um kind of what you guys said as well um but again, Zozos is a single on one of my tickets. Now, nobody has hoisted the gold, I don't think. Did I didn't like him. Yeah, I didn't, no. um, I didn't like him. I, I just, I didn't understand the pattern because he was running, he, you know, he was running, you know, decent enough in, in the six and seven furlong races. You know, they stretch him out to a mile. Okay, it's a one turn mile. Then they go to a mile and an eighth. Then they send him to Saudi Arabia for a mile and an eighth. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, he, well, had, he probably he, he didn't run a, he ran one one turn race in like four three years before those two races i just didn't see why you make that move and now he's coming yeah, back. i didn't like i don't know i didn't see him i see i'm like looking at the the write-up kenny peck who makes he has him as his top pick yeah I mean, seven to two morning line i didn't see it i heard somebody else like them. i forget who it was but yeah um all right uh before we move to the derby where we'll go one by one we will finish off with the um, race eleven, Mount Eight Turf Classic, uh, or uh, what did you call it? The Old Forester, right? Old Forester, I think that's the name. Is of that it. always what it's been called? It was, was it the uh, wood, what was the Woodward Reserve? No, it was right. Yes, yeah, it was yeah. right. That's what I remember. So yeah, the, the many different names. Um, it is a Mount Eight on the turf. Jason kick us off. Yeah, again, this is a big replay race for me. Um, well, first of all, even before we get to the replays. I don't know about you guys, but I don't see a lot of speed at all in this race. And I thought the eight was lone speed. Never surprised. I like Jeru on lone speed, so I'm definitely using him. He's not going to be my top pick. Um, my yeah, top I the three. I, you didn't think the three with science? I mean, he's shown speed in the past. Um, He's inside yeah, of me. I don't see Saez letting that horse well, get Saez there. is a speed. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... Listen, I was just going to use him as, I mean, he's and I nowhere. Thought even, even five program trading, especially coming off the layoff, might come out with some energy and, and show speed as well. Yeah, he could. Um, well, my top pick is going to be the six. Um, I'm very busy. It's Irad and Brown. He's going to be flying late. 
Uh, I am also using F5 program trading, Pratt and Brown. So, you know, probably on the majority of my plays and tickets, I'm using five, six, and that's it. Um, replays brought me into that one. I mean, I know he's not a big price, but I think the one's got a shot integration um, for Gaffleon and Shug. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, throw him in there. And I have something written down on my PP, and I can't read it now. Uh, anyway, for that horse. But I, I'm definitely using him. And like I said, I'm just going to throw the eight in as a bomb. I, I actually like the eight to finish second. Um, if you look, he, he's kind of a horse that kind of gets caught at the end and finishes second. So on, in exactes and tries, I'm going to throw him second. But uh, six, it, five, one, and eight. The eight, the funny thing with the eight is he just can't find a jockey, which is a little surprising. Yeah. I mean, he's had Irad, yeah. Cheyenne, Morat, you know what I mean? He's like, it's kind yeah. of strange. You don't usually see that. Especially. And I, I do have some board horses. Like, that, that three I thought is a board horse. Um, you know, I'm going to use him. <laughs> and then obviously the web slinger, you got to use him for the board. He seems to like Churchill. Yeah, I thought the four, too, if you want to throw, like, second time Clement, board, you know, horse. Yeah, has I, I remember that horse. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, all right, for me, I, I was only too deep here. It's another race where... I thought the one was interesting. I thought the four was interesting. I thought the five was interesting. I thought the seven was interesting. I thought the eight was interesting. But ultimately, I only used two horses because I just think they're kind of above everybody else and one of those two win. So the first one was the six. Um, you know, I'll give it actually my top pick. My top pick was the 11 Naval Power. So again, it's Charlie Appleby. You know, he's, he's two for two at the distance. He's stretching out off of the Maker Mile. Um, so he's adding distance. He got all kind of trouble coming out of the gate. He was just compromised and came flying late and, you know, almost clipped. And that's only at a mile where I think he's best um, even go a little bit longer. So, again, it's Appleby, the Tory. So I had the 11. But then the 6 was my second pick. I'm very busy. Had a horrendous post and still took that race easily. It's Irad, it's Brown. So for me, one of those two horses I think gets the job done. That's why I didn't want to spread any more than that. But I will use them. That would be used equally. I, I don't want to separate them. Naval Power has a post that's not great. So I think they're used equally, but 6 and 11 for me. Chalky? 6 11. Um, it, you know, you mentioned the quirky turf. So if I have to pick one on top, I'll go with the 6 because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe, you know, we're still early in the meet here, but Fairgrounds form has translated well to the newer Churchill course. So, you know, he won the grade two uh, on fairgrounds last time out. Um, so I'll give him the very slightest of edges over the 11. But I think that's it. And if you were going to go deeper, I mean, I would throw the four and the seven in there because they were noses apart in the American turf last year. So they've run well on the course, but it's just 6-11. So you, you guys wouldn't use the five at all? He's got two grade one wins on turf. Mm -mm. I mean, I, again, I just thought the six and 11 stood out more. Um, yeah. And I'd rather use a horse that's kind of been out when it comes to a race like this, one that isn't coming off a layoff, you know, one that's been running. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely, you could talk me into using the 11, obviously, and when we do our multis, but um, I just thought the five was alive as well. I mean, obviously, we all like the six, but. Yep. Okay. Well, it's about that time now that we're going to move to the Derby. Why we're here today, we're going to go horse by horse for the Derby. Um, we do have a scratch already, right, in the the 9 in Sino. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. correct if I'm wrong. Yeah. So that does bring in the 21 horse. We did make the mistake one year of not talking about a horse on the AE list. We won the race. Still don't know how that horse won the race. Um, as Jason put because together some. Cost the, some, uh, how many thousands of dollars? <laughs> yeah. Fair amount. Fair well, amount. So just crazy, but I, um, just, so we probably even covered the 22 horse just in case somebody else scratches, but there, there well, are, he can't there, get there, in. There, there are no more scratches. So 20, right, 20, 22 right. can't get okay. in. I mean, all they right, could so scratch, but 22 can't draw in at this point. Yep. All right. Well, good. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, let's get this kicked off then. Um, we're going to start and I'll just go over exactly how I see you guys on the screen around the horn, um, for each horse. So. The first horse is the one door knock a little bit of Philly connection as this is the one that Jason Worth has some sort of ownership in. I don't, I don't, Chalky probably knows more, um, but he does have peace. Jason Worth, obviously, of the 08 Phillies. Door knock, who was, and I'll kick us off. 
I see no chance this horse has. He was slow in Florida, won the Fountain Youth. He was somehow two, almost three to one in the bluegrass, which I don't understand at all. And he did not run, um, you know, really to par. I guess he, he was on the pace, but I don't see this horse from the one pillars having any chance to win. He's not a board horse for me. He's nothing. Jason? I agree, but I definitely think he's going to be a pace presence, right? Because, I mean, Sias has no oh, choice yeah. but to... Yeah, he's going to have... Unless he gets up. compromised out yeah. of the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Him. But if he gets out, he's going to go, and he's going to make the... Add some pace to the race. So, you know, it's Saez. He's a, he's a speed jockey. Um, obviously, the draw gives him no chance. Um, you know, if you have to use that horse that much to get him out and make sure he doesn't get caught, he's... I mean, make sure he doesn't get uh, hemmed in or whatever. Uh, but he's, yeah, I agree. He's a throw out for me. Chalky? Not fast enough. Was looking for the betting against this horse, but the post draw uh, might dampen some of the money they takes. Runs the best in the lead, so they're going to have to gun it from the one spot, and it may uh, affect the pace scenario and screw things up there a little bit, but that's the only influence he'll have on the race. Yeah, and let's play it. We could also, as we go, play a little game. So, so Doorknock is 21 Morty Line. Do you see him higher than 21 at, at post, Jason? Chalk? Uh, I mean, I, I've i seen what the odds currently are. Yeah, I've seen some of the imputed odds oh, from okay. the double. So, uh, yeah. So I think he's it. around that, isn't he? He's, he's, I, yeah, I'm going to pull him up while we're looking just so we have yeah, it. Yeah, so, I, so instead of guessing, we can use actual numbers. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the numbers are going to be off because you have triple digit horses and there's nobody that's going to be that big in the derby but yeah 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 but you never know i mean just imputed imputed odds don't always relate when it comes to derby because you're getting a, you are getting a lot of you know dumb money when it comes yeah to track, and, and i mean, actually heard somebody talk about this and might be the guy that the tweeted he said you know for the individual race you're not going to get a horse that's probably going to go off at 60 to 1 or more but people that are betting for the name where they'll say oh well this horse is 60 to 1 let me put a little money on it they're not going to bet that horse in the multis so you'll get right, more of I a mean, truer so. price yeah um, so door knock the imputed odds or projected, uh, based on the double payout is 33.7 to one currently at 27.7. It's probably r- where he probably should be. All right, let's move on to the second choice here in, uh, Sierra Leone. It's a Chad Brown horse. Tyler Gaffleone is on him. Jason, you're up. Yeah. I mean, obviously this horse is going to be flying down the stretch. Um, The one thing um, I did do, um, and I, Chalky and I were talking about this, was um, I pulled a list. There's a there's a stat out there for uh, the speed or the the I guess the how fast the horse has finished their three eighths in their last prep race, Um, and believe it or not, he ranked twelfth Sierra Leone out of the twenty horses in in his closing speed, but. I still think he's going to be flying down the stretch. You know, he's got that good thera- theragraph pattern um, where it looks like he, he's ready to jump up. Um, I just, I don't like the post. I mean, I know he's a closer. Uh, now Tommy dropped off. This is just a nightmare tonight. Anyway, uh, I don't like the post. I know he's a closer and uh, I I still think you want to carve out the spot you want to carve out without working to get to where you want to, and then kind of sit back. And I think he's going to have to do work. So I was against him to win, but I, you know, definitely use him for the board. I guess I'll I'll, I'll jump in. Um, The horse has done very little wrong, but the style is not conducive to dirt racing, let alone a 20 horse race. Uh, I post does no favors. We'll have to work out a trip. Um, I think he's definitely you gotta you gotta use him to hit the board, but I don't I don't think he's a win candidate for those reasons. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we can move on to uh, Mystic Dan, uh, the three. Uh, Chalky, you could take this one first. Well, he ran a big race in the slop two back. Not much else to get excited about. No interest. Yeah. So just you know, well, I'll I'll, I'll keep calling out those final three eighths numbers. He did had the ninth fastest final three eighths in his last race. Um, and he's going to move up on a wet track if somehow it rains at some point tomorrow, which who knows, which, which 
Louisville weather. Um, but I still think board at best, like I, I don't have them anywhere in any of my win bets or anything. Um, Hey, I'm back. So not sure what happened. A little internet issue, of course, happens on these big shows, but I am back. Not sure. I know we went through two horses. So I'll, I'll touch on them briefly. Did not get the opinions of Jason and Chalky on these, uh, but I will give mine. So Sierra Leone and Jason was saying something about his final eighth or whatever, but, you know, Sierra Leone was actually my top pick. So I don't know if that's good or bad based on what these guys have said, but, um, yeah, I mean, he's third time blinkers, so he's he's been running since he put blinkers on in his three year old season. He kind of exploded through with Gaffleyon. Um, just to, to he's freezing again, asked, and he just exploded. Um, in my opinion, and was able to blow by just a touch. He was a he was a contender in this race. Um, his. Remsen was eye-catching on the move, he, you know, kind of the middle move he makes, which we, we talk about all the time. Brown's due to get one of these races home. The two posts is a concern, uh, of course, but I do like the fact that the one's going to fire out, which will give Sierra Leone on a clean path to kind of get out, move over to the rail. And he still, he has enough speed that it's not like he has to sit, sit way, way back because there are some slow horses. Um that he can still get middle of the pack and he'll have a nice route trip. He will have to navigate traffic. Um, but I do like him as my top pick. Mystic Dan, I did not have as a win candidate, but I did have as a board candidate. Um, probably third is, is the ceiling, I, I would say, for that horse. Fourth, more likely. Um, I know Kenny McPeak did win the Oaks earlier today, but that was um, the highest ceiling I had for that horse in Mystic Dan. And I think that catches us up, right? To yep, the four yep. catching freedom. Um, Sierra Leone, for you guys, was that a uh, yes or a no, Jason? Uh, you know, for me, he was more of a board horse. Um, I just, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about his post. Um, I mean, I know he's a closer and all, but I still think like he's going to want to get into a, a position like maybe outside. I mean, I know you said he might try to save ground on the rail, but. I don't know. Um, I don't see why if he's starting on the rail, why he would come off the rail. I mean, he'll come off the rail at some point in the race, yeah. but I, I, don't, I think in the beginning part, he's got to save. save I believe really you guys know I do that sheet. I had him ranked fifth, I think. But, you know, obviously he could he could win if the race breaks, you know, falls apart. Yeah. He could win. How about you, Chalky? Where, where was he for you? I, I'm not going to list him as a win. I'll have Three horses, spoiler, he would be number four, but I'm not putting him on the win level. But and then perhaps the most talented, just a post and the trip he might need are enough to keep me as a board. And then the three Mystic McPig would, uh, and, uh, we can move on to the four. I, I was the same way. <laughs> Jason's got that. I, I don't I do have anything to say. I think he could hit the board. Um, yeah. And especially if it rains, I think he could get the board. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I'm going to pick out where I left off, which is the four catching freedom and Chalky's turn. I, I, I lost track of it. Um, the four is one of many Brad Cox, or is other one of them scratch. Well, Brad Cox catching freedom with um, Pratt aboard. Uh, Chalky? Yeah, I mean, this is an uh, interesting horse. You know, won the uh, Louisiana Derby last time out, has improved speed figure wise every single race. Um, I, he's going to have to take another step forward and it, it just might not be big enough. So he's, he's definitely a legitimate board candidate. I, I don't have him as a win candidate, but he's a very good horse, but not in my win slots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd probably say if, if I don't think he wins at all. I don't see him as a win candidate at all. Um, and if gun to head, I would say he's not a board horse, but I can see him hitting the board. Um, I mean, I guess that's a horse that could probably run second, but I, I wouldn't be in love with the horse. I'm not I'm not very big on the horse at all. Uh, I do think the field's not great, so that's why he couldn't run second. Uh, but So he either froze. Do you see him as freezing or just me? Okay. Uh well I'll 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 jump in here. Uh, you know, so he's ranked third for me in, in the uh, three-eighths time. 
Um, he had the third fast three eighths time and actually Mystic Dan was ninth. I forgot to bring that up. But, you know, he's got a win at Churchill. It's Pratt who has run every time he runs in a derby, he's run well. Um, he's gonna be flying down the stretch. Um, and it's just the same thing again, like for me, I just don't like closers in, in dirt races. Um, so he's just gonna be bored for me, but I think he could get second. All right, let's move on. Uh, I, I don't know. I think you went. Who went first? Uh, I think I, yeah, I led with uh, the four. So, all right. So I'll I'll do catalytic. Uh, you know, for me, he's just he ran second to fierceness. Uh, you know, it, I thought that race was a conveyor belt. I don't think anybody kind of changed positions there. Um, he's he's just a toss for me. Although he did improve his figures improved stretching out, but. I'm, I'm tossing. How about you, Chalky? So when I printed the PPs for this race, I went to go, you know, I went to, you know, cross out the horse that was scratched. And Jason, maybe you can see. I scratched out Catalytic for some reason. I thought he was the one that scratched. It was actually the nine and Sino. But uh, I'm going to go with my first instinct and just scratch, scratch him man. off as not having any chance to do anything. There you go. All right, let's move to the six. Just Steel. Uh, Chalky, you could have him no. first. No. I don't have no? anything. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of interested in this horse. Um, I you know as a bomb, I guess we change we change spots. Yeah, yeah I went in the cavern know. now. <laughs> I don't know if I was too far. The router kept giving me an issue. I don't know, Tom. All right, so Tom, you could you could have catalytic. We uh, Chalky and I gave our opinion there. I don't know what your thoughts on the five All catalytic. Right. I just gotta lower it because now I'm upstairs. I think it's the basement screw me. All of a sudden, this, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a non-video part because the edits with the jumping on off is gonna be way too much. So, yeah, audio only for the derby. I mean, it's still all right. Well, whenever. No, we're Sunday. we're going. We're 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 live. We're doing we're it live. live. Oh. We're going. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Catalytic. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What do I have here? Okay, he has no shot. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, six, just feel at the Wayne Lucas horse. Um, Jason, I'll go to you to start this off. Yeah, so just feel he ranked seventh in his closing three eighths time. Um, I, he's got to win at Churchill Downs as a long, long shot bomb. I, I was kind of interested in him. You know, he's at the eighth pole. I think he's going to be hanging in there. Um, he's probably not good enough, but. Like, if you ask me to give you, like, two absolute bombs, he would be one of them. Um, but, again, more likely just for the board. Yeah, I got him as fourth. He's a horse that, like, could hit fourth. I don't. I think that's the ceiling on the horse. I was never, you know, I did run a one in the, in the, in the arc. Yeah. Uh, he ran it two in the southwest. So he has some sneaky numbers. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, which can move him up, but again, I think that only moves him up to like, you know, the fourth spot. Third or fourth, yeah. Yeah, I think third would even be a stretch, but at that point, you know, you know, who really? Mm -hmm. uh, Char? No interest in anything. Okay. All right, we got uh, the seven, Honor Marie. Uh, I'll kick that off as I do not see this horse having any chance for any part of the board. Chalky? Yeah, I mean, I've heard some people like the way this horse was coming in, but there were some backside rumors that uh, might scratch out. I think the doctor had to do an exam, but the horse is going to run. I can't put it in the win category. Could it get into a third or fourth and a some kind of exotic maybe, but I don't, I don't have it as a as a win contender. And Jason? Yeah, so he's uh, sixth in his closing three-eighths time. Um, he's another horse that's going to be flying down the stretch. He's got two wins at Churchill Downs. I don't think he's good enough to win. I do think he could get the board. Like, I don't see why he couldn't get the board. Yeah, I do think that that, that, that your closing times are going to be, because they that race was super fast early, too. Yeah, so, I mean, that I mean, was conducive to the closers. It is a legit stat, though. Like, the last, I forget, out of the last 25. Yeah, but, derbies, but don't like, they also have to run the early part of the race in a certain metric as well, if I recall? There's, like... Uh, I, There's I a stat where they had to, they had to run, articles. like, their first quarter, you know. 
Because if you look, all those were, I guarantee if on your list that the Louisiana Derby probably has the top three horses are in the top. So you, at that point, you just say that race is going to be the race. You know, that's the only no, thing. There's, I to. mean, there's a, there's a horse, um, there's a couple horses that are like one, two, three that weren't from that race. Yeah, but I, is there any other horses from that race that are running? I don't know. Uh, well, uh, Catching Freedom, right? He was the least amount of derby. He, he was third. Yeah, what was his closing, his closing time was in? Uh, he was ranked third for... Oh, uh, right, and he's coming from, from that race. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, Honor Marie was sixth. It's just, we, I, I just think it's gonna, I think the pace of it early kind of skews that stat a, a little bit as well. But I mean, it's 80% that. of the last 25 derby winners, though, have... Uh, like their three eighths time was, I forget where, like if it was relevant, pretty right, much. Right. So. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to the eight just a touch. Uh, Jason, it's another Brad Cox horse. Yeah. Um, he's tripled twos on his telegraph. Um, I, I see that as a pattern to improve. And we were talking about this earlier. Um, I, I, I was looking a lot at the thoroughgraphs and I noticed like Cox's horses had had the patterns that definitely flow through to thoroughgraphs where like if they're pairing or they're even tripling, like they're they're ready to move up and then they'll move up a race and then they'll move up again. So um in looking at the at the list, like five or six derbies, you really only have to run a zero to to win the race. So I definitely think he can move up to there. Now, does he have enough like bottom and experience? That I don't know. Um, but I'm I'm going to use him as one of my win candidates. Like probably at the bottom of my because if I have like three legitimate win candidates, he'll be third. But I think he can win. Charlie, and this is my first official win candidate of uh, of the pick so far. Um, and to what Jason said, you know ran triple twos and and has a right to move up. Um and unlike the other Cox we've talked about so far catching freedom, you know, he went from freedom went seven, five, four. So an improvement there could be four two. Two might not be enough, but if you're starting at a two and improving from there, you could certainly run a number on the on the sheets that will win you the derby. Um of course lightly raced, you know, last time out, um, got caught by Sierra Leone. But that was his first two turn race. Is the mount of quarter going to be too much? Possibly, but there's obviously some talent there, and at somewhere between eight to ten to one, might be a little low, but I I I like the I like the chances, so I I will make just a touch uh, a win candidate from uh, my selections. Yeah, I, I said I'm different. I didn't like this horse really at all. Um, the justifies to me never you know that mile and a quarter distance is very taxing for them. Um, as they're better, you know, under a mile. Now he's, he did run a mile and an eighth, um, at Bluegrass and he ran well. I, I know some people said the fraction was kind of fair. I saw it as a slower fraction. He wasn't really tested either. Um, and, and, um, Sierra Loon kind of blew right by him and he looked like he was tired at the, you know, with the quarter pole and, and, and Giroux was just kept getting into him and, and kept him going. And that was that Keeneland track was so speed favoring so inside speed favoring bias and that horse had the perfect inside trip you know on as speed so i think that's what carried him to the finish line more so than uh his ability so you know could this horse get a piece of it uh sure I i'm gonna say no ultimately because i think he's pace compromised i don't think he's one of the better speed rate horses i think there's better a better horse in there I don't know the trip he's going to necessarily get. Um, I would think he's going to be forward place. I don't see him if he's not forward place having any chance. Um, so he's just not a horse that I was, uh, well, I was latch on. So I do differ uh, from you guys on that one. All right, moving on. Horse 10, T.O. Password. He is a Japanese horse. And we'll give, I'm going to give Jason the honors on both the Japanese horses go right. first for his Love for the Japanese racing. I do think uh, Japan is due to win a derby. Uh, he obviously has zero chance to win. But I think he's going to be a pace presence. Like, I think they're going to, if he gets out of the gate, they're going to send so, the horse. So we were talking beforehand. 
the problem with these horses are they do they don't struggle get to get out of the gate. Yeah. They had horses kicking. They had, you know, there's been yeah. all kinds of issues. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. No shot could factor in, but also could just play no part in the race if he doesn't mm-hmm. ever get out. So, Chalky, anything? You know, I mean, we, we they, there were a couple of Japanese horses last year, and I'll repeat what I said, which was they got to win one for me to be a real believer. Um, so, no. All right. The number 11, Forever Young, the better of the two Japs in these horses for sure. Um, Jason, I'll let you go again because this right. is your country. It is. Uh, so he's got the fourth, believe it or not, he's got the fourth fastest finishing three eighth time. Uh, you know, we, we like looking at, at thoroughgraphs, and he's got a great thoroughgraph pattern. He's paired ones, and he's ready to me. He looks ready to make a big move up. And for me, he's a big contender, and I am definitely using him to win, um, but he will be my number two win candidate. Yeah, I actually had him as a win candidate as well. I only have three horses as win candidates. He is one of them. He would be the third of my three. But he was one of the horses. I was one that did like the Japanese horse last year. So full transparency, I tend to like the Japanese horses in these races as well. I do think they're going to win a derby. And I, unlike Chalky, I like to be part of it when they do win it, opposed to have to wait to be part of it the next time. So he was one of the horses that I had as a win candidate. And on Chalky? I lied. This is my top pick. I have I have the eleven Forever Young as my top pick. Um, one thing that that caught my eye too. We talked about the troubles in the gate. The scratch the nine moves him in from eleven to ten. So instead of loading first with the one, he loads last. So he will not spend. He'll spend the least amount of time in the gate. So least amount of time to get fractious. The break could still be you know an issue, but that's having to wait for the other 10 other or 18 other horses to load could have been a negative that now becomes a positive. Um, you know, they're gunning to win one of these. That's for sure. And in, in a, in a year when maybe there are, there's one maybe standout horse and a lot of other horses, I think this could be the year. And Jason probably helped talk me into it with his love of the horse over the last few months, but I'm going with the 11 on top. All right. Um, so the 12 track phantom steve asmus to me this horse is a huge part of the race um because he's got adam blinkers and his speed but as we've seen in other derbies rosario is a little bit lazy coming out of the gate in these derby races and if he doesn't get out of the gate we've seen you know the str- the strangler i think is his name or whatever they call it. he definitely grabs so He's going to have to catch a flyer coming out of this to, to send the horse, even with the blinkers. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's, if he gets out and fires, he's a huge part for Sierra Leone. If he does the typical Rosario, uh, he could be a huge part for another horse that we'll talk about later. Um, so although he has no shot to be any piece of this, I do think he plays a, a humongous factor in the race. Talk to you. Yeah, I mean, he's if he runs to the the past performances, he's going to have a huge part in the pace. And I don't think he can win if the track is very speed favoring. He maybe he can hold on to fourth in the super. Um, I don't think he's in the try. And um, but if he runs the race they want him to, he will definitely have a lot to say about how fast they're going up front. Jason. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Um, he does have a win at the track, and he's got sneaky numbers, um, but he's mostly a pace presence. Um, but I do think sneaky to kind of hold on. Like, if it's a speed-favoring track and, you know, who knows? Maybe he holds on for third or fourth or something. Yeah, but, my my concern now, like, with the equipment change, like, what, what it's his eighth race, seventh race, you're adding blinkers to a speed yeah. horse. Like, so I guess the big... The concept is he's lazy once he gets to the lead, like he's on the lead. I, yeah. I don't know, but I don't know. That's just a odd move for me in the derby to add yeah. blinkers to a speed horse. It's, it's a huge negative for me. So I, I can't back him. But, um, okay, this should be a quick one. West Saratoga. Jason? Well, he's got, believe it or not, he's eighth. In his three eighths race, uh, final three eighths, um, he has a win at Churchill Downs, but obviously he's just not fast enough. Um, with his three eighths time being fast, fast, if it's a fast race, 
does he get fourth? Not impossible. It'll be like 70 to one, probably, which is obviously zero chance to win. Yeah. I mean, for me, the reason, like, if I'm going to pick a horse in the, uh, the, the gym stakes, whatever you want to, whatever that race is anymore, Bruce. um, I'm going to pick the 14 endlessly, who's going to be a horse coming off the pace, uh, to hit the board, opposed to a horse that's going to be speed coming off of that race. So he was, yeah. a t- he was, uh, a toss, like I said, that was the reason why. Uh, Chuck will finish the race as if he started the race from Saratoga. <laughs> All right, let's move on to 14 endlessly. We'll go to Chalky on this one. Uh, at the aforementioned winner of the JR Ruby Stakes, um, first try on dirt. I mean, could hit the super, not really for me, other than a fourth on the bottom of a super where you're playing a lot of horses. Yeah, same. I saw him as like third or fourth bottom of super. These, 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 uh, turf paradise or whatever the, um, uh, turfway horses, you know, they, they've transferred their, their form. Sometimes the, the Churchill track, you know, we've heard many things about that track in the past with these, uh, synthetic horses. So, uh, fast pace could, could come flying. Raspoli rides them well that way. Um, and could definitely hit the board. Uh, Jason. Yeah. So he's got the second fastest closing time. Um, He's a turf horse, and they sometimes run well at Churchill Down. Um, he's going to be flying late. I definitely see him as a possibility for the bottom of the board. Okay, the 15, Chad Brown's domestic product, which does have Irad. Very interesting horse. Um, he has 30 to 1 Morty line, which is just absolutely crazy. Irad's on 30 to 1, but I guess he didn't really have a horse to pick. Jason? So here's our number one closing time speed horse, uh, fastest closing time. Uh, he's cl- also closed into very slow races. Um, but again, his his final three eighths times is is the top in the field. I thought he was maybe sneaky as a bomb to win. Um, it's Irad, you know, uh, more likely just bored. But uh, you know, I, I said there's probably two bombs if you ask me that could you know if you twisted my arm i say man you got an outside shot and that would be the six just steel and then this 15 domestic product all right chalky uh paired sevens last two races uh has a right to improve but even with improvement ceiling for me is likely third so just not running fast enough to win and i don't think there's that much improvement in here yeah this wasn't a horse for me at all um I mean, you know, it's hard to say can't get third or fourth with Irad, but I almost want to say can't get third or fourth with Irad. All right, the six, Grand Mo the first. Um, he's a horse that if you 16. play them, what I said, what number I say? Six. No, oh, sixteen. Six. Grand Mo. He's a horse that if you bet him the show every race, you probably made a little bit of money. Um, he likes to get fourth. He likes or third. He likes to get third in fairly bad races. Um, and he will not be getting third in this race. He has, to me, a, you know, bottom five type of feel to it. Could even finish last. I don't know. So no go for me. Jason? He is a pass for me. Chalky. Nothing, nothing doing here. All right. Here's your um, derby favor, Fierceness. He's run some buyer figures that we probably haven't seen for a derby contender for a few years, for a while now, or this early in their season. You know, he had ran a 110 in, in Florida, just eye-catching race, ran a 105 as a two-year-old. So deserving favorite, five to two. Uh, at what's the, the odds chalk and the About two to one, About two to about, one yeah. About that. Um, I think, wasn't he, well, his odds like, um, what was his odds in the uh, advances? You know, whatever. They were like uh, uh, even money, wasn't he, at one point? Yeah. He was high. So that the imputed from the double is 2.2 2 to 1. As of uh, 6 o'clock, with, I guess it's just Kentucky money rider on track. He was 3 to 1 in the actual line. That'll drop. Yeah, I think you'll probably get around 2 to 1. I think yeah, it'll, I be, think it'll two, be 2 to 1. Yep. 2 to 1. Um, he's a win candidate. I mean, he is a win candidate for me. He was the horse that I would say, like, you know, me and me and Jason were talking before him. You know, he probably need the stalk. I don't think he, you know, he he's going to go to lead. But saying one of those horses that looks like should go to lead doesn't, 
I do think Johnny Ree's going to yeah. play the the break, and he's going to he's done it with Amer- um, you know a couple horses in the past with uh, was he on Authentic right? He did it with Authentic where he took over. So you know I think he's going to play the break and and kind of figure it out from there. So I don't know which style necessarily he's going to play. Whether he's going to be on the lead or stalking, but it'll be for it. Um, and obviously, if the pace isn't, if he's for it and the pace is not that high, he's he can finish. So he's a very, very likely horse that will win. Um, I do think he's slow. I, like I said, I had Sierra Leone, but you know, he's I have him close. I have him close as 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 my top pick, but I do have him win. Chalky. Yeah, I mean, it's my third win candidate for obvious reasons. I mean, he knocks on him. He hasn't run two good races back to back, and he hasn't. You know, won a race where things didn't go his way, but the two races he did not win had extenuating circumstances to a certain extent. So it's not like he just didn't fire. Um, now yeah, it's weird that the the two races they have rather is they both were the break. That, like, yeah, he lunged at the start. He got pinballed at the start. Like, is that him? Was that just racing luck? And no. look, the at the Derby is a race you can lose or win at the break. Uh, yeah. There might be no recovery if it doesn't work out right. Um. The actual that he would have been the outside speed doesn't need to be able to lead, but he would have been the outside speed had the 21 not drawn in. So the 21 is going to fire. I don't know that'll make that much of an impact, but it doesn't need the lead. So should be able to work out a decent enough trip uh, if there's no issues with the break. Um, now, again, back backstretch rumors. Some people watch in the mornings. Looks like he has some soreness in one of his foot, uh, one of his feet or hoofs or whatever they called them. Uh, the paw, whatever, you know, oh. got stuck in the, got stuck in the girl, oh. ma, oh. but you know, <laughs> oh. 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 uh, so, you know, I'm not at the track, but all I know is after what happened to these connections last year, if the hoof doesn't fall off by tomorrow morning, they're not scratching the horse from the race. Yeah. So, so. I'm not what are the, who are these back stretch connections? Yeah, I didn't that, hear that. that. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to endorse some of the, some of the lunatics on Twitter, but the same person had two days out that. Forte was going to scratch last year because of the issues. So I'll give a little credence to that. Um, let's say he's, he's also indicted for some things, I think, or he's getting sued by a very prominent trainer. But anyway. Um, I know who you're talking Yeah. Um, I don't. You have to tell me. If, for what it's know. worth. But uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. So if, if anything is off, we're not going to hear about it until after the race because they're not going to scratch him. But I mean, it's undeniable. Yes, you got to consider him a winner. Okay, Jason. Yeah, I, believe it or not, this horse has the fifth fastest closing three eighth time. Um, uh, for me, it's simple. Like if he if he runs his best race, like he's gonna win. If he gets out of the gate and he gets in a good position, I I I don't see him losing. Uh, but he is like Tommy mentioned. He's on that every other pattern, and this would be the pattern of him running a bad race. So. Uh, but it's like you guys said, it's more related to him not getting out of the gate. If he does, uh, I, I, you know, as long as Johnny V doesn't, you know, lose brain cells and try to go with like some kind of crazy speed horse and not, you know, raid him, which I think he will raid him. I think he wins the race. So he's, he's obviously, man, you know, this isn't, uh, anything earth shattering, but he's my number one wing candidate. Yeah, this is the type of horse that, like, you just can't. You're stupid to just take a stand on. Like, yeah, you like got to use it. He, if he runs, if he gets out of the gate and runs, he's start, he, he, he could regress. Long, he, can smoke he ran a minus three. He could regress yes. to a minus yes. one and still win easily. Yeah, he can smoke him, but he's a, you know, he's also a horse that, right, maybe craps out again. So it's like, you know, I understand maybe you don't put win money on him, but like yeah. it's stupid to take a stand against this horse and say, I'm a, I'm dead against this horse. Like he could just embarrass the, the field. So it's like yes. at some point when you go, if you're playing multis, you want to be live to this horse. You may want other horses as well, but you want this horse on your dick it. Yeah. And it's just stupid to just take a stand. And look, I, I mean, I took a stand against Forte last year as a favorite because I didn't see the horse improving as a three-year-old he would just run the same numbers and he was winning races but like yeah, i mean but, this I, horse, agree. I mean i'm not the, 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 this I'm horse not, ran a negative three like yeah, he's improved he stands against favorites i'm saying but this is not the this is not the same this is not the same pattern to do it right like you know, they, running they, negative threes and like, yeah. they, they compare him to bellamy road and then they say well bellamy road ran like crap but like he also i think was sick right in the race didn't he have uh 
Didn't he bleed or something like uh, that? He might have. He was laid up. He was laid up till the Travers that year. And then that, I think so the Travers was his right last race. I, so. I mean, one, like, you, we talked that, about That was also a ridiculously fast pace that he was close to. Right, so and I don't think it's going to be that fast this year either. No. And we say negative three on the paragraph. So, pe- you know, a lot of people listen to maybe buyer or something. He ran at 110 on buyer. I mean, that's yeah. like. Older horses are running you're like, wow, man, you see that horse ran a one ten. He ran it as a three year old. It just it's crazy. Right. All right. So let's uh, a couple more here to get through. The eighteen stronghold. It's a uh, San- Santa Anita shipper. He did win the Santa Anita Derby uh with the motto. I did not like this horse at all. I think he's too slow to win the race and I have zero inch. Jason? I believe it or not, he's got a win at Churchill Downs, which is pretty crazy for a Santa Anita horse. Um, I, I, I don't know. He just hasn't run fast. Uh, I mean, could he improve a little bit and maybe catch the bottom of the board? Uh, possibly. I mean, I like the motto. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really too interested in him. Yeah, it's funny. The race you're referencing has that. You know, and I'm only looking at the PV, but the second and third place horse are both running it, and that made it special way. They're both running the Derby as well. The race he oh, won at Churchill, which is yeah, which is kind of interesting. So maybe maybe he's better in his numbers. That could be a horse that maybe his numbers just don't don't flatter him, but he's better. Chalky. Yeah, I mean, it got see win the San Anita Derby. I, I, I'm thinking that that may end up being his peak. I don't I don't have him for anything. In the Derby. Yeah, you know, that was a race we talked about on the pod here, and I actually picked him to win that race. Um, but he he's pro- he ran two big races because the Sutherland Derby didn't have enough points to get him. You know, he's kind of on the cut, so he had to run that race and had to run well. So, you know, how much has he still got in this in this form cycle? All right, the 19 resilience. Chalky, I'll, I'll let you go since you did have him in the wood um, with Jimmy D on our pod. He is the uh, Billy Ma horse. Yeah, I mean, again, another horse that's been improving a little bit each race would have to take a big jump to win the Derby. So I don't see that as being likely. I he's he'll be an exotics play for me, you know, at least third, maybe second in some tries. But I, I he's not going to win the race. Very unlikely. Uh, Jason. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like the wood. I mean, it's I don't know. It's just never, never really a relevant race. Um. I, I'm not a, not a fan. I don't like his post position. I don't know. I'm against him. I had no interest in this horse whatsoever. Yeah. Don't like the post. I'm against the wood. I think he he peaked with his first first time blinkers last race. Yeah. In a race that just like, I mean, determinedly didn't run well. And we said going into the race, the rest of the horses really weren't very good. Um, and that's so I, I'll stick with that. And uh, we move to 20. So the horse that finished second to the race that we don't think was very good is Society Man. Jason, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I don't see it. I do not see it. Chalky. Uh, I'm pulling up his imputed odds because uh, he was 106 to 1 in the wood. And somehow I'll translate that to a 50 to 1 morning line, which they won't. But he is uh, imputed at uh, 93.7 to 1, which it won't be that high. But that's about that's a that's generous. Uh, that's a not enough value. Ninety three to one. He's no no chance. All right, and I'm I'm gonna run downstairs and grab my uh, book that has my multi in it so I can give it out uh, while you guys talk about Epic Ride. I'll talk about first. He could play a pace factor. Has no chance to do anything else. Uh, Jason. Jason. Uh, I just don't see it. Um, I, I I you know not not for me. Uh, I'll vamp a little bit, I guess, because I don't know how long it's going to get down the steps, although I could just edit it. Um, in a race yeah. where anybody could finish third, I really don't think he could even finish third. So he's not he's not in anything I'm going to be betting. All right. That sounds like there's a little bit of like in that horse in your tone, Chalky. I don't know. I think he changes. Well, my, my notes say third question mark. Likely. Likely not. Likely not. But there's going to be... Like- there's gonna be there's gonna be a ticket where I have an all in the third slot with with a single a single right all. So side man in third. I'm just saying. Well, we're on epic right. ride, so or epic ride. Uh, Jason, do you? Uh, so that's the derby. Do you want to give out your pick five ticket? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, so I do have one. Um, race eight. I'm gonna use two, seven, eight, eleven, and twelve. 
Race nine, I'm going to single to five. Race 10, I'm going to be four, six, 10. Uh, race five, race 11, I'm going to be one, five, six, eight. Um, I'm going to take a little stand on my ticket against the 11. I mean, I'll, obviously, when we do our combined tickets, I'm fine with using them. And I'm just going to go too deep in the uh, in race 12. Uh, I'm only going to use uh, the 11, uh, Forever Young, and then the 17, uh, Fierceness. And that would come to, I believe, $60. All right, and I'll, uh, I'll give out. I have two sixty dollar tickets. Uh, do I? I think I have two sixty dollar tickets. So it is Derby Day, so you can spend a little bit more. And it's uh, singles on both tickets, just changing up. So I had five, seven, eight, ten, twelve on one of the tickets. On the um, this first ticket, I had two, five, six, ten for the second leg. I singled the six, which I believe was Zozos on this leg. This yeah. Um, then I was 6'11 in the turf, and then I was 2'11, 17 in the derby. So uh, I added Sierra Leone to Jason's pretty much. And that, I believe, is 60. Then my second take in again was 5'7, 8, 10, 12. Then I'm single to the five, which is Jason's single as well. And then in the Zozo's race, I spread out to the 2, 3, 4, 6, and then finishes the same way 6'11, 2'11, 17. So I believe both are 50 cents, $60, 120 total. Chalky, you want to take us home on this? All right. So race eight, seven, eleven, twelve. Race nine, three, five, eight, eleven. Race ten, three, four. Race eleven, six, eleven. Race twelve, eight, eleven, seventeen. For fifty cents, that should be seventy-two. And if you're going to press anything there, it would be the five in race nine and eleven, seventeen in race twelve. Okay. Yes. Pr pretty. Pretty, I mean, I, all our picks were pretty, pretty similar, I would say. Yeah, I mean, we'll be able to put together a decent yeah, ticket, I think. And, I mean, and that's common. I mean, nobody, yeah, we had a couple bombs, but for the most part. And and Derby Day, does that, is that usually bombs away besides Derby? I, I'm trying to think. I know that one year in the slop, you had Funny Doc, some crazy horses, but. Yeah, last much. year, well, last year was chalk until the Derby, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. There were some like, you know, co-favorites, but it was like two to one, three. I mean, you had, um. Cody's wish one and then yeah right right, right yeah but. yeah the one thing I will say is at least this year I'm not seeing like a you know a three to five horse right in any no. any of the legs yeah probably not the um, thing might be might be one of the Appleby horses but I don't think you're going to get yeah I think eight, eight to, to five, five. yeah, yeah that's that's, the, that's right as low out. as it's going to go exactly I do, I do have a bet that is a little related to the Derby but there's obviously two races that are run after the Derby. Um, and I'm going to do a pick three where I'm going to do all in the Derby and, you know, I obviously with all the bets I'm going to have, I'm going to still want 11 or 17 to win. But if something crazy happens and West Saratoga wins or something, I'll be live because there's two Cox horses in race 13 and race 14 that probably aren't losing. So I'm going to single, single, and then do all in the Derby. So it'll be, you know, whatever you're going to bet it for 50 cents for $10 or dollar for you know twenty dollars and i'll be live going in the last two races just needing two cocks probably monsters because it's derby day and i'm sure he's unleashing monsters there so yeah i i haven't had a chance to look at the card outside of what we capped here so i'll i'll, I'll definitely take a look um you know like you said it there's made in special weight sometimes you will see some monsters some of the lounge races you'll see like a horse coming off from made and win that yeah. might be a monster so so, something to look out for. The, these big-time trainers like to unleash horses on these days, of course, with their owner. Especially ones that have, like, big-time owner connections and being the winners for close up. Yeah. Something to keep an eye on. All right, episode 105. Sorry, we did have some technical issues. Hopefully, Chalky has fixed many of them. In the magic man will have to get to work to fix everything. It's going to be a uh, The derby is at 657. Hopefully, Chalky will be wrapped up by then, trying to edit this slop that we had at night. 6.57 um, in the morning on Saturday, I think I'll have it out by, so. Uh, all right. Well, episode 105 uh, at Broadsheet Hustle, our Kentucky Derby show with a little bit of sixes recap. Have a great night.